Hey, this is Greg from the Dillinger Escape Plan, and you're watching Brutalitopia. Hey everybody, this is Mick again from Brutalitopia. We are here in Chicago, and I am uh, obviously sitting next to Greg Pusciato from Dillinger Escape Plan. Greg, how's it going, man? Good, man. Really happy to be in Chicago. We've played a bunch of killer shows here, and we've never played this venue, I don't think. Really? So. First, First time? Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty excited to play somewhere new, yeah. Nice. Um, and I know you guys uh, obviously are on a tour that's... Uh, Turned a lot of heads when it was first announced, uh, you and uh, the Deftones on a tour together. What's uh, How's that been going so far? Good, man. I think it's a really synergistic mix of two bands that, like, you know, at when we initially announced it, I knew it was going to be a tour that a lot of our fans were going to be psyched on, you know, because I, th I think as a more intelligent, heavy listener, the Deftones are a band that you just should be listening to. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize there were so many Deftones fans who were already kind of like, if they had never seen us, they, 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 the bug had already been planted in their ear, you know, especially after I did the uh, benefit with Chi last year in LA, it seems like it kind of put us on a lot of their fans maps. So it's been something that we've known those guys for five or six years. And every single time, I mean, longer than that, like, we see one another, it's one of those things that like, why aren't we touring together? And it's always been because of logistics, like our records come out at opposite times of a cycle and we're ending and they're starting and we need to write and they need to tour or they need to write and we need to tour. And this was just kind of like a thing where it's like, really, are we both on the same page? Are we really both trying to plan a tour in in uh, the early summer anyway? Yeah, let's let's finally get this done. And then it just turned into a mammoth. Like when we announced it, the interest and the buzz was so high that we just kept adding dates and dates and dates and it ended up being a nine week tour and i think originally it was only going to be like six or seven so yeah because i was going to say it's uh you you guys are definitely two bands that have a history together and everything and like you said it's just kind of like something that finally fell into place for you guys and everything. yeah yeah, yeah. It, like there's very few bands uh, on our wish list of bands that we think not only we would love to tour with because of you know the fact that we like them as a band but that we also think it would make sense for our fans and it would you know they're people that we already know and like it's like so rare to you know maybe two or three other bands in the world that we know and like and think would make sense and so it is like a magic combo you know cool, cool. um and i know uh, obviously um you speaking of last year with your guys's two albums dropping obviously you guys had a uh, option paralysis your new record dropping one one of my personal favorites of Thanks, last year man. um what uh how do you feel the reception has been of it so far in comparison to perhaps the earlier dillinger re re records um it's really hard to tell because uh you're everything is so momentary that it becomes you know the, the, the what's going on right now always seems more exciting than what happened three or four years ago and so you know, every time we put out a record, I'm like, this is the, you know, the best record. This is the most well-received record because you've already forgotten what it felt like four years ago. But I really did feel, what I did notice this time was that uh, when we, we would play Farewell Mona Lisa before the album came out, and it was like within like a couple days of us even streaming it online that we were playing it. And uh, there was never a song that we released that instantly when we would play shows like people were really really psyched on new words too already like that hadn't happened since I, the last time i felt that was when we would play good dogs do bad things off of the mike Patton ep that leaked a little bit before we put it out and like people were really like you know frothing over it so to speak and uh uh farewell felt really good right out of the gate and i was like man we i think we really have uh have something right now that we haven't had since miss machine in terms of of uh like there's some sort of energy in the air you know so i don't i really don't know what to attribute it to because i don't think ioworks was was uh, a lesser record than than yeah. this one that I, I don't know to be honest yeah, with you <laughs> every, every record has something different to offer but um uh what do you feel was the uh like noticeable differences with uh the recording or perhaps how option paralysis turned out or in the writing process or notable differences yeah i will say that uh, this is the first record that we've ever made that instantly we were happy with when it was done you know every miss machine and ioworks both uh, as soon as we were done them I had a hard time even listening to them, you know, I know Ben too, and I know there's things that we would have gone back and done differently almost right away, and things that we wished we would have changed or added or not done, or and, you know, not because we think other people are going to care, just because it's really difficult to start out with a vision, finish, and then say that you did exactly what you set out to do, and on this one, I think uh, there were a lot of things that just 
uh, our, our abilities are higher now than they were last time. And I think things that we were reaching for before that we didn't quite nail, we nailed this time. Like trying to mix, you know, our sound with melody and things like that, I think was a little bit more awkward in the past than it is. And we really had to separate and be like, okay, this song is Panasonic Youth and this song is Black Bubblegum. You know, and they're totally separate styles. And now I feel like we have a song like Feral Mona Lisa that starts out like a Panasonic Youth and then morphs into like singing and it doesn't seem awkward, you know? And I think that's just because we've grown more confident in our abilities. But uh, this was the first time we've ever written and not been fighting, that we haven't been in the process of losing a member. I know our member changes have been well documented, you know? I mean, Cody and Cambridge is playing right down the street tonight. So as far as uh, <laughs> old ex-members go, you know? But uh, there's always been some sort of uh, like tumultuous vibe within the personnel and this time instead of feeling like we were writing while losing a member we were actually writing right after we had gained billy so there was like this new infusion of energy instead of like this oh shit what are we going to do yeah. like after this guy and I'll separate as soon as we get done recording uh so yeah it's just it felt really healthy which is strange i think for us um, kind of moving on to the uh, the bigger picture of the band. Um, I know for whenever I uh, talk with fellow uh, fans of metal or just rock in general who are somewhat familiar with the Dillinger Escape Plan, it's just kind of like like their initial reactions always like, oh, that's like really off the wall, kind of like every <laughs> yeah. you know, shits everywhere, crazy music. Um, what exactly um, are like influences that kind of combine into what you guys create because i feel like it's obviously there's like so much going on in your yeah head. it's like you know you're pulling from like jazz here and then like just you know hardcore metal here and it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah where does it all come from i think we're all mega fans of music like I, and i think that at this point our influences are so hard to pin down especially because we're such individuals outside of the band we don't live near one another uh i really don't know what mo like everyone else is doing when we're not on tour, you know, I, I don't know what's on Liam's iPod any more than, you know, sometimes we plug him in and I'll be like, what is that? And he'll be like, what is that? But I, I know that we pull from such different areas that I really, it's hard for me to trace our influences at this point. And I feel like uh, I, there's no one, when you're in the, when you first start a band, you're trying to emulate, you know, whoever your heroes are. And then after 13 years of being in a band, when I'm writing a vocal, at least, I don't think to myself anymore, oh, this is what, uh, you know, whoever. This is what HR from the Bad Brains would do here. Oh, this is how Zach Taylor Roca would sound if he were here. This is what, you know, I, I don't really think that as much as I used to. And now I just feel like I, I know what I sound like and I don't get in my own way. So it's really hard for me to pinpoint at this point. I know it's a shit answer. I should have, I should have like a lot of bands and I'm like, well, you know, and I list people, but I, I don't honestly have anyone that I feel like I'm blatantly copying at this point. Do you guys, have you guys in the past ever gone like into a record, like thinking like, um, have like a preconceived notion of like we want to sound like this or is it just kind of like like it just turns out to be what it is I care more about feel. I think we talk we, we're, we talk way more in terms of Like feel and vibe than we do in terms of like technical things like I want it to sound like a combination of metal and you know like we, we're more like this the, We want the vibe to feel I'll know within like two or three songs of writing where things are going and I just want to get out of the way more than anything and not try to force it. You know, if we, we've started out records and been like, we want to make a crazy heavy record. So like the first four songs we write are really heavy. And then the fourth one will be like some piano type song that we're working on. And we'll try really hard to like not write it. And, and then we finally get out of our own way and be like, okay, this song is going to be a fucking, you know, piano -y song. And on this record, we didn't do that at all. We literally were like, just let's let the, the record go where it's, going to go and not get in the way of it because that's when you really start compromising artistically when you try to force the hand of whatever is naturally trying to happen um for you personally what was it that uh what band perhaps was it or type of music that really like got you into metal that was like this is what i have to do i have to be a singer or yeah i mean i can pinpoint the three records that really got me were appetite for destruction when it came out i was like seven years old and uh and uh, it just was like the first record that I heard that hadn't been like, that I didn't hear through like osmosis from my parents. It was like the first record that like someone in like first grade had and like, you know, gave me a copy of that. I was like, this is amazing, you know? And I became like an MTV addict at that age because MTV actually showed videos all the time. Right, right, right. So I was just obsessed with Guns N' Roses and I, I loved that my parents, 
that was like the first time my parents were like not psyched on whatever I was listening to, and it <laughs> felt so cool to be like, "Whoa, they're not into this. This is rad." This, you <laughs> know, and uh, <laughs> and then like a year later or so, or two years later, Appetite for I mean, uh, Justice for All came out, and when Justice for All came out, that was like <laughs> the big crossover to me from like Guns N' Roses, which was more like rock into into metal. And then uh, a buddy of mine, um, after Justice for All, gave me uh, um, Rain and Blood. Uh, Slayer and that was like too much. I couldn't handle it right <laughs> away and it's uh, not for everybody No, a couple <laughs> but uh, like a month or two later I was like I really you know want to know what that records all about and then I just loved it and from then on like I started to get into like You know uh, uh, that was such a cool time man because bands started coming out left and right that were so different But so interesting as a kid mm -hmm. faith in the more came out right, you know rage against the machine Nine Inch nails tool Soundgarden Pearl Jam Nirvana It was just like this onslaught and then like even in like rap it was like it went from like goofy you know Nickelodeon color rap to like you know <laughs> scary shit like <laughs> NWA and stuff that I you know again like my parents would just be like you shouldn't be listening to that and <laughs> yeah so I really had like a lot at once you know in that time period um, well moving on from uh, this tour obviously it seems like it's been going well and I had no doubt about that but um what uh after past this tour is the uh, are there any immediate plans for Dillinger escape plan or anything yeah or? yeah we uh, we ha we're gonna take like a month off after this tour maybe yeah, a month and a half and we're gonna try to start writing what what turns out to be either the next record or we were thinking about putting out an ep just as like a you know i really like the idea of being able to have like a concise idea instead of having this big laborious process of like recording an album right. and uh you end up having to take all these little stylistic journeys with an ep it is easier to focus and be like we're gonna put out two songs that are just absolute like you know sure. Insane, uh, insane, <laughs> you know, skull crushers, and uh, you can do that without it fucking four songs in turning into a piano song, you know. So that is easier to manage. So we'll, we may we may try to do that, um, but then in August we have to go to Europe and play some festivals. And uh, I'm not saying it like we have to. But yeah. We're going to Europe to play some festivals, and then uh, we're gonna do a uh, later in the year full Dillinger headlining U.S. tour, and that will wrap up, uh, I think, the 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 almost two year tour cycle that we're kind of in the middle of right now well uh won't keep you too much longer i know you got uh, oh that's okay pl plenty of stuff to do but um uh just to kind of end off on a uh, little bit of a lighter note here i noticed um i only found this out a couple nights ago but you guys are actually playing a second show yep. in chicago yeah. here tonight um if you don't mind the uh the cheesy and totally unnecessary pun here what is the uh escape plan for you guys tonight after the show do you like just immediately like pack escape everything plan up is and a just say truck that we have coming <laughs> at the end of the night and we're going to escape by way of uh u-haul <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's going to be a little bit of a, a clusterfuck, honestly. It's nice that you guys have a little bit of a later curfew on weekends mm -hmm. as far as like that kind of stuff goes because we can play at 1 in the morning and, and get away with it, whereas some cities it wouldn't even be possible. So it's going to be cool. We really haven't played any headlining shows uh, on this tour since, I, I, I don't think so, since the actual Deftones date started. So it'll be fun just to go from playing an op you know, a shortened set at Deftones rushing and there's yeah, a certain sense like of urgency some of the best shows we've ever played were shows that we literally walked on stage like p pushing gear through the crowd five minutes before we were supposed to play because we were late so maybe it'll be that vibe tonight who knows you know hopefully it, is that uh it'll be fun is it just you guys playing there's no one no there's a few openers i'm not okay. actually sure you know uh, who they are okay. it's hard to keep on top of like when we do these one-offs like who the local ish bands are that are playing but i'm, I'm sure they'll be killer okay. you know there you go. Well, everybody, another Brutalitopia exclusive interview here with Greg Pichotto from the Dillinger Escape Plan. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, no problem. Be sure to check out Option Paralysis, their new album right now. Greg, thanks a bunch, man. Thank you so much, man.